Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about Marvel Comics, and particularly the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're in a bit of a lull between movies currently, as Avengers Endgame came out over a month ago now. And the next movie that's coming, Spider-Man Far From Home, well that's coming out in about four weeks. Pretty excited about that one too, as Spider-Man has always been a personal favorite of mine, but I have to admit, I am a little worried about the future of the MCU going forward after this year. With all the emphasis on the new, now infamous, Captain Marvel, who premiered earlier this year, and she had a cringy cameo in Avengers Endgame, which of course included her girl power moment at the end. Well, after all that nonsense, needless to say, I'm a little worried this whole franchise could become girl dominated. And that's not necessarily bad on its own. Women are great, and I of course don't hate them at all. I'm not a misogynist by any means. But just because I prefer the way things have been with mostly male heroes, well, that doesn't mean I hate girls either. And that's not the only or even the main reason I worry about the future here. Really, the biggest problem is these girls can't take the reins normally and rise up on their own merit. No, instead, they have to do it by going all feminist and social justice warrior. And also, they like to shit on men along the way. The Captain Marvel actress, for example, really let her being the first female-led hero movie go to her head. Brie Larson even had the balls to shit on white men in press interviews, saying we shouldn't review movies that weren't made for us, whatever that means. And things appear to be getting worse and more progressive in the future for more Marvel movies, at least according to some of the recent statements in the press. We're going to go over two articles about this story today. First, this one that promises more diversity and inclusiveness in Marvel's future. And then after this article, we're going to talk about another one that's ranting and raving about Marvel's first gay superhero. Can't wait. Regardless, we're going to get to all this today and more. But first, let's take a moment to hear from our loyal sponsors at Raid Shadow Legends. In case you've been living under a rock for the last couple months, Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new new RPG game for your mobile devices. And best of all, it's free. So why not hear me out and maybe give it a try today? Raid Shadow Legends has an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss battles, and more than 400 champions for you to collect, customize, and enjoy. Pretty sweet. And the most amazing part about this is Raid will really remind you of all those old classic RPG games. It's also available on your mobile device, so almost anyone can play. And you'll really enjoy the great battles and events that that will keep you entertained for hours. And just check out this video footage and you can see the crazy level of detail on these new champions. I would easily say Raid is comparable to lots of other AAA full priced RPG titles. And only click on these special links because you'll get a special bonus. Not only does this help support the show and give me credit, it also gives you guys free in-game currency. Like 50,000 silver to start you off in the game store so you could buy some cool stuff for your first rig. Good luck with the game have fun and thanks for your time and now back to the show. Great, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into this first story. It comes from an article at comicbook.com called Marvel Studios Promises More Diversity and Inclusivity in Phase 4 and Beyond. And that comes off as pretty absurd when it's being said right before and among a picture of the new Spider-Man movie. That shit was hella diverse. Almost as diverse as you could possibly get. It had guys, girls, whites, blacks, Asians, Latinos, and even some Indian guy. And I think almost everything is represented in Spider-Man Homecoming too, so I really don't see how we could get more diverse after that. And sure, this article is going to talk about the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, but I thought this correlation was pretty interesting. And I have to admit, I am still worried since, with all this in mind and the way these kinds of SJWs usually mean diversity, well, let's be real, they really mean less white people and less straights, usually. So we'll see where this goes, I guess. Let's give them a chance though, and read on. Marvel Studios EVP of Production, Victoria Alonso says the Disney-owned studio is actively working towards a more diverse and inclusive Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would feel honored to have a member of the LGBTQ plus group represented in our films and I hope the future shows that, Alonzo wrote in a Reddit Q&A Wednesday when asked about the addition of LGBTQ plus characters to the ever-expanding franchise. In a separate comment, Alonzo added, I can tell you we are actively working on making our universe as diverse and inclusive as we can. Be patient with us. We have a lot coming in the future. Well, I can't say I'm actually very excited for that. Again, there's nothing wrong with more girls and more gays and everything at face value, but when you consider how preachy and feminist and social justice warrior-esque it has been done so far before, and I really have doubts this will be a good move and done well in the future. And also, I resent the implications here too, being that this movie series isn't diverse and or inclusive enough already. That's what these comments imply to me, and I just think they're playing wrong. Aside from gay characters, which admittedly, there have 
haven't been many, that we've seen at least, but besides that, all the other demographics are pretty well covered. We've seen plenty of black characters like Nick Fury, War Machine, Falcon, and the whole cast of Black Panther. And then there's lots of women ones too, like Pepper Potts, Jane Foster, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, and of course, the now detested Captain Marvel and her whole BS movie. Asians have appeared here or there as well too, particularly alongside Doctor Strange and his film and his storylines in The Avengers. The only groups I don't see repped are the aforementioned gay community, at least not much, and perhaps the Latinos could use some more roles too, although there have been a couple of smaller parts for them already. There's that bald Hispanic guy from Captain America, and then there's Ant-Man's best friend in his movies. He was cool. And finally, the Robbie Reyes version of Ghost Rider had his own story arc in Season 4 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is an almost forgotten show by now, but it is still running and it is still canon in the MCU, so I think it certainly counts. Regardless, I think you guys get my point. Besides maybe having a few more Asians and Hispanics and gays who are open about it, maybe they need a little more attention, but besides that, I think we can see that the MCU is already pretty damn diverse and inclusive. They're certainly not excluding anyone, and the fact that the higher-ups want to brag about pushing more diversity in the future is a little troubling. MCU-inspired ABC television show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. introduced Inhuman Joey Gutierrez, played by Juan Pablo Raba, a gay man, and the movie side of the franchise featured its first openly gay character in Avengers Endgame, portrayed by director Joe Russo in a cameo appearance. Marvel's Runaways highlights lesbian romance between Nico and Carolina, but scenes touching on Valkyries and Okies, I could never say that name right, bisexuality, were deleted from Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther, respectively. The franchise will also feature its first trans actors in Spider-Man Far From Home, in theaters July 2nd, and Russo and May promised the MCU will receive its first LGBTQ plus superhero very soon. Good God, what a mess. This is scary, guys. First of all, of course Spider-Man is going to feature multiple trans actors in its upcoming sequel. Like I said before, that first MCU Spider-Man movie was diverse as hell, and it was almost distracting, and it seems like they are using this series to push the lines of so-called diversity in Marvel. Whatever, it didn't bother me too much before, just a little annoying and somewhat obnoxious. Luckily, the movie was still sweet, so we could look past it and hopefully the next Spider-Man movie, Far From Home, does this shoehorning in of trans actors in the same passable way. Next, let's talk about all these gay characters we've had already in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. S.H.I.E.L.D. even had a gay Hispanic, and that's what we call a twofer in diversity points, or the Diversity Olympics, which it feels like we're playing here sometimes. And then there was the gay guy in Endgame, which was a little jarring and out of place, but it was a short scene and early on, so the rest of the movie made you kind of forget it. Although, I still have cringe nightmares of the part of that scene where Captain America is cheering on the gay guy for dating once again, in some sort of support group he runs. That shit was awkward. And then, the article mentions two lesbians and two bisexuals featured in TV shows and movies. So, combine that with the trans actors coming up in Spider-Man Far From Home, and I would say, Marvel is already pretty well represented. It's showing all the demographics pretty well for me. At least if you go by scale and are trying to represent things in amounts and percentages that these groups actually relate to real-world society. This is called being realistic sometimes, too, but I'm not sure these progressive SJWs calling for more diversity see it that way. Even though there are only 4.5% of Americans who are gay or LGBTQ, and also there's only a half percent that are actually trans, well, even so, SJWs want more than those numbers in films and in popular things, because they love taking them over. Or maybe they just want to propagate a false image that they're bigger than they really are, because in their world, it seems like they think half the country is LGBTQ, when it's really not. So having a few characters like the ones we've gone over, well, these are perfectly fair and accurate numbers so far. To go further wouldn't actually represent reality. Not that superhero movies need to be hyper-realistic, they usually aren't, but they are often grounded in the real world as a basis. So to turn the MCU world into a female-dominated gay and trans sex party isn't going to connect with Americans and other people who have actually been in the United States. Next, let's move on to the other article we mentioned earlier. This one comes from IGN and it's called How Marvel's First Gay Movie Superhero Can Be a Success. And funny enough, it has a picture of Men in Black International on the front by it here. And that movie actually features two Marvel actors, Chris Hemsworth who plays Thor and, of course, this black chick who plays Valkyrie, one of Marvel's upcoming bi or lesbian heroes or whatever. Funny coincidence, but not much more than that really. And this article retreads a lot of the last one too, so let's skip across the intro a bit and get to some of their suggestions. Their suggestions for what the next gay superhero from Marvel should be like and how it should be made. Their first sections of this article are pretty related. They're called Do Show Queerness on Screen and Don't Take Too Long to Do It. Basically, they're saying Marvel needs to really show that these characters 
characters are gay this time. They want hugs and kisses and everything, apparently. No more holding back. And while this isn't super important to me, and it's also not my cup of tea, but I can't say it bothers me a whole lot either. It just seems a little demanding and pushy and cringy. Like, we know a lot of these characters are straight too, but do we have to see them making out with chicks to know it? Sometimes these stories don't have or need romantic plots at all, but the gays are really getting excited here, and they want everyone to know that their people are on screen, which isn't too surprising coming from such a flamboyant and attention-seeking kind of group, I suppose. Now, the next point they make here I do take some umbrage with. Here they say do involve queer talent, and I don't disagree because I don't want gay actors to play gay characters, but I also don't like the suggestion that they have to be gay actors playing gay characters. Do straight guys have to play straight characters? Because if your answer is no to that, then it should be no to the gay question too. And this isn't just about the actors either. IGN's article suggests gay writers and directors must be involved too. And while that's not a bad idea, getting them involved and getting their experience noted and considered could help the project. But also, can you guys even name any famous or legitimate gay directors or writers? Because I don't think squeezing in some unqualified gay movie makers here just to fill a diversity quota, well that's not a very good idea either. In the end, this all seems pointless at best, and like they're very bad ideas at worst. I say what's far more important than so-called diversity and inclusion is making a good movie. Maybe these people in Marvel should just forget about this bullshit and focus on making good lead characters that people like and want to watch and enjoy. In fact, very often, viewers don't care about who a hero is banging after the battles are all over. For example, very few are actually interested in Batman's love interests, even though they do often squeeze a girl in there for him. But it's usually just a side story at best. So basically, it's the hero in the movie and its story that actually matter, not the actor's, director's sexuality or skin color, and not the main character's love interest necessarily. Although sometimes it is a good plot point. And whenever I see titles of articles like what we saw today, saying stuff about how the main appeal of a project is that the character is gay or a woman, well that usually means those characteristics are being used as a crutch. And the movie is going to lean on that and not be very good because of it. It ain't got legs, or at least its legs are broken, that's why it needs this stupid SJW crutch. What do you guys think? Do you think Marvel movies need to get more diverse and inclusive? Do you think the SJWs will ever be happy with minority groups and their representation? Or do you think they will constantly just ask for more and never be pleased, like how they always are and always have been? Comment your thoughts and everything below, and thanks for watching, no bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.